Hi guys, back again with yet another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you um, a bad system, a seat system here of springs. It's called a drop-in spring unit that's attached to a wood frame. And this is a saddle seat and really springs should not be on a saddle seat because a saddle seat shouldn't look like a saddle. So when you add springs, springs tend to belly it up in the middle and that's not what you want. So I'm going to show you how to, let me just show you the underneath part here. I'm going to show you how to remove these springs, which I, in my opinion is not a good uh, system here, and then change it to a polyurethane seat. Some of you have been asking about that. Why not just take the springs out? Now in most cases I don't take springs out, but in this case I am. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the cover off and see what we got underneath here. It's always sometimes a surprise finding things. You know, you might find an old cover in here, but this is the uh, original cover I believe. Tear that off. Already loosened some of the tacks. Okay, so this has a cotton and a hay uh, seat, and that's really no good. And the burlap here has been has been totally dis decimated over time. Um, but this this spring unit that they have in here is uh, not a good unit at all. Um, it 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 it's not even a hand tied spring unit. So, and like I said, you know, with the saddle, you really don't want springs, um, and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to take this. I just want to show you. Uh, how to take this, this rail here has to come off in order to get underneath a chisel or a tack remover sometimes can do that job if you look this up, we are not going to replace these wood edge rolls, a wood edge roll is not a great idea we're going to replace it with the soft edge roll you'll see that in a minute, so I'm going to take this off just to show you, just to get started on these springs these are put on with very large tacks and um, usually they come right up let's just see how these there we go so all of these come out there's only six of them really one two three and then three in the back and this whole unit's going to come out and then we'll try to recycle this metal but it's not going to be reused in this chair saddle seat folks you want to start webbing from the back to the front not side to side and the back to the front webbings are going to be stretched with a trusted webbing stretcher side to side is going to be a hand stretch and I'll show you that in a minute. Always start if you're doing three front to back which we're doing here we're going to start in the middle and we're going to give this a good stretch with the webbing stretcher. In my other videos I've shown you how to use those and we want drum tight So at each layer, starting from the very bottom layer, determines what our outcome is going to be with our fabric. So it's very important to start on a saddle seat the way we're starting here, front to back, and get a good stretch on these webbing on these webbings front to back. It's really kind of our only support. A heavy support, put it that way. So I'll cut this off. Do that one. Okay, so uh, I do not need the webbing stretcher for these side to side webbings because we don't want to take the curb or the saddle away from the seat. So we're going to hand stretch these. 
So I want to start, uh, I'm going to be under, over, and under. That's actually important where you start in the front, because if you went over, you'd come off the curve. The idea is not to come off the curve. That's why you don't need the webbing stretcher for this. You don't want to tighten these two. I'm going to hand stretch it. It's a very light stretch. It, it, it goes with the curve. You know when you're pulling it too high is when that comes off the curve. It's very important not to do that. I don't think they teach this in books. I think the only way to really get an idea how to do this is to take an upholstery class or watch the YouTube videos. Okay, so the next, we're going to weave the next one over, under, and over, opposite this one. Okay. Folks, for the benefit of the video, I'm actually working on the side of this. Usually when we're doing the front webbings, you'd be at the front, and I'd still be at the front doing these ones. But I'm at the side of this in order for you to see this. Okay, and the last one we're gonna do is same as the first one, under, over, and under. Pretty good. Okay, the next step is going to be the burlap. What the burlap does, the burlap fills in these holes and it also <clears throat> gives you more strength, overall strength in the seat. So I have my burlap's already cut. Usually you want to cut it about three inches larger than the wood measurements, wood to wood, wood to wood. <clears throat> this is a little oversized. So I'm going to staple the back first. Again, we go from the back to the front. And this is a hand stretch. We stapled, we folded and stapled the back on the front where we're stretching it without folding it. We go to a side and we fold it and staple one side and then our other side is our stretch side, our hand stretch side. Okay, I'm going to trim this up a little bit. We, ha we don't have to make any cuts around these posts with this burlap. That frame happens to be on the inside of that post. Fold this double fold at the corners like so. That's a good seat. I like it. So our next step is the foam. Now sometimes folks, what I do with the foam is I put a little cotton inside here to make up the air pocket difference that's in there, but on a saddle seat I don't do that. So you only know these things from experience uh, because I have to pull this so tight front to back. That's not required. As a matter of fact, that may create a bump in the seat, so we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I want this just to come over the edge, this foam, right over the edge. I don't want uh, too much um, underneath here. I'm going to fill that in with other things. Okay, so, you know, now I feel that we need an edge roll because I'm feeling the foam and I'm feeling that this is a little too sharp of a corner. So we're going to take a break and I'm going to show you how to do that edge roll. Okay, so folks, there are three sizes of edge roll. We're going to use the smaller size edge roll for this because it's a saddle seat again. We don't want too much loft on this, which we have to try to mirror that saddle as much as we can. So again, I'm on the side doing this just for your benefit, but I'm at the flange and I'm feeling for the edge of the wood. I want the, flint, the actual edge roll just over the edge of the piece. I'm going to go right around here, around this post. This stuff, the smallest stuff is more flexible than the biggest stuff, so you can do things like that going around the post. 
You want to preform your edges, then staple or tack. For all you purists out there, you can be tapping this. edge, I preform the edge before I staple, make sure that I'm right consistently around that edge. Edges are really important. Okay, I'm going to cut this right about here. While I'm at it, I'm going to cut my back piece. Get rid of this so I don't trip on it. So what I usually do on my ends is I go back and sometimes I go the other way with the staples. I'll come this way just to get the, the ends um, so that they don't roll on us. But I'm pretty good though. Happy with this. Folks, you can make your own edge roll out of burlap and horsehair or paper. This is how this is made. Um, this is how that we used to do in the old days with a series of stitching called blanket stitching. Someday maybe we'll have a video on that. But right now what we're going to do is now we're ready for the foam. Finally. I like to start with a nice clean edge on the front. So what I'm going to do is I do have to get, I'm going to move this this way. I'm going to get this straight across like so. Move it back. Stretch it. Stretch it to the back. Then I need to make my cuts around the post foam. So that gets cut like that. It gets cut like this, and then you can trim it up a little bit. See this piece here you need to trim up. This piece here you need to trim. And we're going to make a cut here. This is actually a cut. It's like a Y, people call it a Y cut. I'm going to trim this, and then I'm going to staple it. Just a little bit more trimming. You don't want to pleat foam. You, you want it raw. You don't want to fold it under like you do fabric. It's too much bulk. Come right around the corner without pleating it. Then I can staple. Some people like to staple first and then trim, like so. Notice that I'm near the top edge of my wood. So you see this piece here has to be trimmed because we have an angle on our post there. So we don't want that doubled up. Go back and trim. Finish it off the back, trim that up a little bit. So we're going from a, a spring seat to a foam seat in a relatively short amount of time. You can see why there's a temptation to do every piece like this to take the springs out. I don't recommend that. I think it's rare that you have to do what I did on this piece to take the springs out and go to a foam seat, but there you have it. Now our, our decision from here, we do have to have a batting that goes over this. A batting, either in this case, it's either going to be cotton or it's going to be a Dacron. And in either case, it's going to come over the edge and be trimmed here. Now, we don't know what this fabric's going to be yet, so we're going to hold off on doing that until we're actually ready to upholster it. And uh, once again, thank you for tuning in. It's been a very, another exciting video, and I can't wait for the next one.